Hello, hello, welcome back to Novel AI. I'm Rint, and today we're going to be going over some more Novel AI updates. We've got a new and improved guide to help you sort out your stories, make sure that they're running pretty smoothly. I'd say it's pretty detailed and in depth for, you know, something that started out as just a couple of extra writers giving out tips and ideas how to use the thing. They've really got the format down and they've even got specific ones for the new Erato model. So if you do enjoy using the Erato model, come here, see what they have to say. And I'd say you can probably gain a little bit of help or, you know, better usage of the tool. And if you're new here, consider dropping a like or a sub down below. It really helps me out and you'll get more novel AI news in the future. This will be right down in the description below, or I will have the chapters marked down in the video so you can just jump to wherever you want to go. I know the updates right now are kind of slow and even slower for text gen. So we're really just going to be going over some tips, some tricks, the new guide. And uh, to all the new commenters and viewers that are here just for Novel AI, feel free to drop any questions or, you know, things you want to know down below and maybe I'll see what I can do to help down there. And if, if it's worthy of a video, I'll throw together something if I can. Let's get right on into it. First off, I know it's not what a lot of you guys are here for, but the novel AI diffusion version for it's just a preview right now, I think, but dang it, it is really good. And I really like it. And I just wanted to sing its praises a little bit here Had a great time with it, even though I'm, I'm not a big image guy either. Image gen is really coming a long way. And I really like what I'm seeing here, especially the, let me scroll down the ability to add in separate characters like add character, add character. I did a few pieces with some of my friends, like avatars and stuff, and they really they liked seeing like all of us together in, in one piece. And so even if you are someone who doesn't really like the image gen side, I recommend, hey, maybe give it a try, maybe play around with it as it's gotten better. Uh, it's not just anime style either. As you saw, there was, hold on. As I was saying, it's a multitude of different styles and they're even adding more and more directional or director tools to help you sort of refine what you want. The vibe copy was another good one that I tested out. So really just recommendation, but you know, that I might add it in before we get into whatever's next. Whatever's next being the new guide that I talked about in the intro. Okay, so I'm just gonna gloss over some of the newer things, specifically pertaining to Erato probably, instead of going over every little thing like ATTG, and uh, memory and context and all that good stuff. All the starter stuff that I've done tutorials on, we'll just get right into the new stuff. If you've not really been like in the Discord or anything, then you might not know this new thing. I think it's being included in more and more um, scenarios pertaining to Erato. For example, Bell Verk's uh, story template has a lot of the new things that we're gonna be talking about here, including the lore of lore books, right? Put it in simple terms, the lore of lore books is basically just telling the AI exactly what it's looking at whenever it looks at your lookbooks with the, the format that we want and what they mean giving it reinforcement on every single step as you can see it's literally just redescribing what we're putting into the context it's usually accompanied by the rules or basically a set of extra rules to your story just in case like maybe you're in a futuristic cyber uh, cyber scenario and you don't want anything from the medieval ages vice versa you can say okay this is where we are this is what we're doing it shouldn't have this and it'll be laid out in like rule number one rule number two rule number three narrative rules you see they go into detail they have examples here on Belverk, so i'd really recommend if you have no clue just go and check this out chuck this into one of your uh or into your novel ai it's on the discord very easy to grab and put in and just fiddle around with it or read what it should look like and take ex take examples doesn't matter if you don't like the starter kits then the guide here still does have great examples and tells you exactly how to set it up is either way this reminds me very much of how instruct models are told to do you know you sit them down and you tell them exactly what you want and so if you're into that or if you fiddled with them more then you might actually get a lot of benefits from this the rabbit hole section in this is just a great one to dive into if you're just looking for some something to think about or you know, how to make your writing a little bit better, how to work with the tool a little bit better. As it goes into everything from separating your, each of your like lore books, stories, everything with dinkuses and four dashes to, you know, getting the model to do what it, do what you want with instructions and even figuring out how presets work by tinkering and then looking at the probabilities, which is just a great thing to know if you really want to understand why something happens. Why are the settings the way that they're set? Why is anything really the way that it is? It even tells you why 
or what each one of these does very, very briefly, but it does tell you what each one does. And I don't think it includes all the samplers that we have right now, but you know, you'll learn a, a ton just by looking around here and figuring out what all this stuff does. Now that if you have this guide, the documentation from Novel AI and the Discord, then you have basically all the balls in your favor. There's so much knowledge shared between the three of them. Then I know I said I wasn't going to uh, go over the lore book section, but then I thought, you know what? I've been using it a lot. It's very, it's pretty different, but it's also got great examples again. So I thought I might just go over it a little bit. So. You can skip on if you don't really care about the lore book too much, but I think just check this section out. Like, look at the side there and you'll see how detailed it gets. We've got like level one through five different variations of how detailed you want to go into the lore book and advanced examples. It's just a beautiful community example of just a great, great tutorial. You know what I mean? So if you really need some help with the lore book, come here and check this out. This is beautiful. And let's just see what we have here. So, I mean, you start out with, you know, just your regular character, uh, gender, age, and then, you know, some appearance. This will get you started for, you know, basic NBCs, anything that you don't really care too much about. You just want, you know, a template of a character down. You know, you don't want your Parker to turn into a female by accident. And, you, you know, you want a little bit of consistency, maybe, right? Then you add a little bit of personality. You know, make them a little sassy, a little creative, audacious, hardworking, and bada bing, bada boom. Right after that, you can tell its affiliations, right? Its reputation and factions. So this is like this is this is probably at the point where you would go like if you're having like guild wars and stuff like that, and you want people to be at war with other factions and stuff. That's where this would come in. Just a reputation, anything like that. Now this this is where the uh, like uh family and stuff comes in friends you know goals and this this is like oh boy you really want to know this character really well this is like information that i would maybe put in like some notes instead of you know doing this for every character highest level that you can probably go beyond that maybe a little bit of prose at the bottom just giving it some words maybe a quote you know but it does go into that up at the top it says uh this is at the bottom here the summary the quote and uh, tells you about the setting thing, which is actually very handy if you do have a character in a certain setting, which will basically like bias it towards that setting. Like if you're setting up a um, an avatar character, and I'm talking about Avatar the Blue Aliens, and you put it in the Avatar series, you know, and then put that in the setting, then bias it towards, you know, being the big blue people. And then besides that, of course, you have your, your extra things like items, effects, debugs you know locations all that good stuff nation states basically these things are pretty much the same you can get very detailed with it but uh just a it's a different style than just a normal character and don't get me wrong their old guide on this was very good this is laid out so much better and has like like even just the levels of up and up and up and showing you examples like that is just really great i really do wish they still had the section where it's like um it had had everything, you know, because I used to just like look at that and take from that a lot. It was kind of like this. Let, let me let me show you this thing right here. This would be like my one stop shop wherever I came back and I was like, OK, what should I add? What should I keep? What should I throw away? And I'd be like, well, I I want him to be uh, this, you know, a species, uh, a status, you know, something like this. Just a full list of a lot of the well-known ones right here would be great and you know they even did it for this if they put this back on there that would be i think very very handy for most people because this is what i came for you know i i can i can somewhat fill out the thing with you know the things but just coming up with the categories itself is a little bit sometimes I'm, i just blank on it you know what i mean even even if I'm, i should be like ah, it's just that should be an appearance you know what i mean should be something something i still just blank on it sometimes wanting to figure out how to step by step start your new story in a quick way i'm going to show you a method that we've gone over a little bit before with sg green pillars in an old video uh, it'll be down below or probably at the end actually instead of in the description but it'll be the same process 
but with some of the new things we talked about today. For the easiest way to get started and a, a quick starter way to do this, we go into the Discord, the Natlin Discord. It should be around somewhere around here, even probably in the description. Go to your Novel AI content sharing tab. And here they have all sorts of preset scenarios, a Disco Asylum style skill lore book, right? In case you wanted a lore book full of skills to use or a role play starter scenario, which is, you know, if you're wanting to do that, then you totally do that. But what we're just going to do is the complete scenario starter pack, which is one of the more updated general all purpose around, you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but I think it's a great starting point. And as all you do is just go in, find what you're looking for, the download file right here. You might want to scroll down, make sure that it's the latest version. Sometimes they do updates. I'm pretty sure this is the latest version. Download it and then we'll take it to Novel AI and I'll meet you there. Now, then once you're in your Novel AI again, uh, drag this down from your starter, drag this in, it should indicate it, and then bada bing bada boom. This is what you'll get with Bellverks immediately. I just dropped it in. I don't know if it showed up on screen because it was in a different window, but same thing, right? Llama 3 Arato selected. A slightly edited preset of the Golden Arrow is so they made a little bit of changes and here you'll notice that some of this stuff is filled out basically you can take all of this away this is just a it, it's a preset you know what i mean it's like it's filled with a bunch of weird things just to show you what you can do like like this this is commented out so it's not even gonna pop up in your context this is just a comment with flavorful speech symbols for no reason right you can get rid of that It'll make no difference if you leave that one in. Uh, this one, you know, well, what you should do is take example of what, what they did here, like how you want to write it down, it, you know, in that style, and then just replace it with what you do want. So this is a memory uh, example here. So take this out, you fill this with the, the example that you would like to do or the memory that you would want for your story and you continue on. The The other way to do this would just be to, you know, start with blank and just fill it out and that's if you know what you're doing. But this one has examples. And we check the context, well, like what's in. This is what is actually in the story right now. So if we had done, if we still had like, you know, as an example so that we can see it here bada bing bada boom we can see where it would all go and be formatted but this is formatted correctly the attg up at the top uh the lore of lore books that we talked about earlier then you have the rules and then you have it looks like a character a, a basic glossary that's what i'm looking for a glossary of characters and then you would have asterisks your memory asterisks the story right under your uh, styling. So, but basically, instead of worrying about how to get those to go into places, which is a little bit of a extra step, we can we can basically look here and see where the insertion order for each one of them is, what their settings are. If you did want to do this on your own, this is how you could set it up. So see they have like all the way up to 12, 400, you know, they have category set up for your characters, but let's say that we make a character here. Character, where is that going to go? We check our context and we didn't turn it on. Character is going to go there. So, and then, you know, fill in, fill in these little categories with whatever you wanted to the floor landmarks clothes species rages make sure that they all sort of in interconnect if they are going to be interconnecting so like if you have an elf character and then you read an elf species race card make sure that they sort of activate together with the tags or just are always on so that you will have you know them bouncing off at the same time as you saw if you don't be careful about it you'll just have one thing go through and then it might not notice some of the characteristics that you gave the race in total check your context every now and then and you'll be able to you know make sure that things are going smoothly i would always recommend just checking your context every now and then making sure that it looks about right you know what i'm saying and if you don't want to use this 
Bada bing, bada boom, just turn that off. If you don't have an adventuring party, you just want to get in, have a little bit of fun, you know, take that off, you'll still have access to just about anything. And that's why it's so great because it's just customizable. You can turn that off, turn it back on later, fill, fill in whatever the heck you need, whatever you don't want, right? Uh, and just make it your own very very quickly a lot of these starter scenarios are very plug and play you can really you know just plug in whatever you want story wise and just run away with it and see what you can fill out that's just how you slowly compile together a story but that's all for rinse league for now drop a comment down below if you want to see something and i'll try and get out another novel ai video as i can really